Oh, hi guys. Well, it is quickly turning into a spectacularly gorgeous, over the top beautiful Friday afternoon here after the latest monsoon. I think it's somewhere around August 25th, 2023 something like that so anyway now that we have finished with uh <coughs> william reese's grand opus talking about the big picture we are now going to turn our attention once again being friday to all of the little pictures the death by a thousand cuts here <coughs> as we get back to our uh ecological meltdown roundup rant where we check in with Manga Bay with Wet Butler and the boys and girls over at uh, mongabay.com to see if there's any journalist on the planet who can get through an entire roundup of news stories without mentioning Donald Trump's mugshot while the entire planet of clueless morons is just absolutely glued to Donald Trump's thug shot uh, the rest of the world is collapsing around us and, and the powers that be are taking full advantage of the single biggest distraction you will see in the year 2023. So, uh, anyway, from the non thug shot newsreel. So, uh, we're going to start uh, over here in the shithole country of Nigeria, uh, where we had a rant just last week about, uh, you, you, you know, about Nigeria, where I look, there, there, there are less than 500 elephants surviving in Nigeria. So this could be, have something to do with it, with the most full of shit headline, it, Rhett Butler ought to be embarrassed by this headline. This is the single most full of shit headline I have ever read in Manga Bay. Elephants invade. Elephants invade as habitat loss soars in Nigerian forest reserve. Elephants straying out of what is of the Afi River Forest Reserve are reportedly damaging surrounding farms. Okay, guys, we need to cut the shit. We need to correct this headline and, and this story. Okay. Let's rewrite the story. I've already sent this as a comment at the end of this story. Humans Humans invade as habitat loss soars in Nigerian forest reserve. Humans straying out of surrounding farms are damaging, well, are, are obliterating the hilariously named Afi River Forest Reserve in the shithole country of Nigeria. <coughs> this uptick in human-elephant conflict comes as satellite data, data <coughs> show continuing and increasing deforestation in the Afi River Reserve and other protected areas in the shithole country of Nigeria. As in other Nigerian forest reserves, <coughs> agriculture, poverty, 
and a lack of monitoring and enforcement resources are driving deforestation in the protected area. From protected areas in the shithole country of Nigeria to protected areas in the shithole country of Cambodia. Uh, this is just the latest in a long line of these stories. New concession in Cambodian National Park handed to Royal Group. We've already heard this before. Uh, and then here we go again. Cambodia's Botum Sakura National Park continues to be carved up and its ostensibly protected land awarded to private developers with close links to the country's ruling party and the latest development um, local conglomerate Royal Group was rewarded a 24,000 acre concession that adjoins another parcel it received inside the park two years ago. This leaves the protected area with 20,000 hectares or less than 50,000 acres of land that is not in private hands. Sounds like a real protected area. Civil society groups have expressed concern uh, over the new concessions being issued in Cambodia's protected areas, especially when the recipients are tycoons with reputations for illegal logging, forced evictions, and environmental destruction. Okay, just so you understand the difference between the first story and the second story. In the shithole country of Nigeria, that was a story about planet nibblers destroying a protected area in the overpopulated country of Nigeria. The second story was a story about planet eaters destroying a protected area in the overpopulated country of Cambodia. Okay, D does anybody not understand the difference between those two stories? A three-year-old should be able to recognize the difference between those two stories, but it makes no difference what the goddamn difference is. It still means that uh, the bottom line is there is no such thing on this planet as a protected area. The very concept of the term protected area in the year 2023 is patently absurd. Okay, what's going on in the shithole country of Colombia? Energy company evades oil cleanup as spills continue to contaminate Colombia town. Yes. Oil activity in the town of Puerto Boyacá in Colombia is responsible for 109 contaminated sites. <clears throat> the oil spills have polluted an important wetland, led to a 90% loss in fish, and contaminated farmland. Yes. Uh, would you believe that no work 
has yet been carried out to restore the contaminated sites. Yep, yep, yep. On to the shithole country of Bangladesh. As Bangladesh's crab fishery booms, its wild crab stocks suffer the fallout. Crab harvest in Bangladesh are booming to meet thriving export demand, but the rates at which wild crab stocks are being depleted may be, may be unsustainable. Uh, okay, what's going on? with the latest palm oil war in the Brazilian Amazon. This is the subject of Manga Bay's. You know, Manga Bay has its own YouTube channel, the title of which is Five Indigenous People Shot in Palm Oil War in Brazilian Amazon. May you think so? Okay, onward we trek to the shithole country of Bolivia, where oil and gas exploration threatens Bolivian Chaco water supply. Hmm, would you believe that Aguaragua National Park is suffering from environmental damage caused by hydrocarbon exploration? Ah, uh, who would have thunk it? There are at least 60 oil wells in this protected area. Huh, most of which are not closed. Hmm. 90 there are, well, supposedly in the whole country, I don't believe this for a minute, 94 active oil wells in seven Bolivian protected area. Huh? Okay. Here is... Talking about the fishing cat. And we all know what the future of the fishing cat is. Oh boy. Alright, we have a question in Manga Bay headline. I absolutely love it when we have a question. The question on the table today is Do virus detecting ants? Hold the key to preventing zoonotic diseases. The answer to the question, do virus detecting ants hold the key to preventing zoonotic diseases is no. All right, here we go. How about this one? <clears throat> Indonesia and Singapore to work more closely against lobster larva smugglers. Okay. If I had to draw up a list of things that Indonesia and Singapore are not working against Lobster larva smugglers would have to be at the top or is it the bottom of the list? Uh, if anybody on this planet, from Rhett Butler to the most clueless moron on the planet, think that Indonesia and Singapore are going to work more closely against lobster larva smugglers, obviously. They have not read uh, William Reese's latest essay. 
Okay. A tale of two biomes. You know, while uh, the Save the Planet little lefty down there in Brazil, President Da Silva, Lulu, is getting all this credit for saving the Amazon rainforest, <coughs> there is one thing you are not going to ever see mentioned on the mainstream media, and that is the flip side. A tale of two biomes as deforestation wanes in the Amazon but surges in the Cerrado. Brazil has managed to bring down spiraling rates of deforestation in the Amazon rainforest in the first half of this year, but the neighboring Cerrado savanna has seen a wave of environmental destruction during the same period. This, the country's second largest biome, the Cerrado, is seeing its highest deforestation figure since 2018. So uh, there is more carnage going on in the Cerrado under Lula than there was under Bozo Nero. Uh, so what do you think's going to happen when uh, they start cracking down all these cockroaches in the Amazon? Uh, the cockroaches just move next door. And we see the highest deforestation rates right next door to the Amazon rainforest than we've seen in five years. Satellite data show 3,200 hectares, otherwise known as 8,100 acres of the Cerrado have been obliterated off of this planet per day. Per day since the beginning of this year. Hmm. The leading causes of the rising deforestation rates in the Cerrado are a disparity in conservation efforts across Brazil's biomes, an unsustainable economic model that prioritizes monoculture and escalating levels of illegal native vegetation clearing. Hmm. Given the importance of the Cerrado to replenish watersheds across the entire continent, its destruction would affect not just Brazil, but South America as well. Experts warn, adding that the region's water, food, and energy security are at stake. Sounds like the little lefty Lula is uh, hoping correctly that 99% of clueless morons on this planet have no clue what the Cerrado is. They have never heard of the Cerrado. My guess is two-thirds of Brazilians never heard of the Cerrado, could not point it out on a map, and 99% of this planet's clueless moron population never heard of the Cerrado, never will hear of it. All right, we've already talked about this story, but I guess it bears <coughs> repeating Activists slam coal pollution from Indonesia's production of clean electric batteries. Indonesia's electric vehicle ambitions have seen it ramp up refining of nickel, a key component in EV, batter EV batteries at industrial sites springing up 
across the country. However, these smelters are powered by coal-fired power plants. I think we read the same story last week. Okay. Uh, I think I'm getting ready to go after this rant to grill up some hot dogs. Getting out the hot dog buns. I will be getting the bread here shortly. Getting the bread. What is the environmental impact of wheat? Wheat is the most widely planted crop on earth by landmass with 217 million hectares, otherwise known as 536 million acres, an area the size of Greenland uh, devoted to it. <coughs> Large-scale production of wheat relies on synthetic can you say fossil fuel fertilizer, which contributes to climate change, algae blooms, and oceanic dead zones when nutrients from these fertilizers run off into the environment? Yes. Would you believe that the biggest single environmental impact associated with your loaf of bread came from the synthetic fertilizers used in growing it. Yep, yep, yep. D, 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 D. Okay, we're letting AI predict the next species extinction. I wonder where humans are. Okay. What is going on with wind farms in uh, Brazil? In this biome called the Caatinga, which even I have never heard of. For Caatinga's last jaguars and pumas, wind farms are the newest threat. In 2013, 10 years ago, it was estimated there were 250 jaguars and 2,500 pumas in the entire Caatinga biome in northeastern Brazil. But you better believe those numbers have plummeted. And now, the latest growing threat to the big cats is in the rapid growth of wind farms with four now operating inside the Bocarau de Anca protected area, the stronghold for both species. The development of these planet-saving installations comes with noise, deforestation, and loss of access for the big cats to their water sources. Mm. Oh, boy. You would not believe, we've already talked about this one how many times, would you believe that Indonesia permit payoff raises alarm about palm oil industry corruption. Hmm. Okay, here is the we shall see. Uh, you know, all of the lefties cheering on Ecuador referendum halts oil extraction in Yasuni National Park. Yes. <clears throat> All right. We have a story on the circular economy. This is just one of the things that William Reese 
pointed out the uh, bright green lie of the circular economy. A circular economy is still an economy. Rolling car tires into the global circular economy. More than one billion car tires reach the end of their life each year. You can make that one billion and four here in a couple of months. And dealing with the resulting waste is an escalating management headache the world over. But even long before tires are thrown away, they leave behind a trail of environmental destruction stretching from tropical forests along the supply chains and to consumers. Uh... It needn't be this way. Circular economy solutions could offer tire pollution solutions. However, these solutions come with limitations and trade-offs. Do you think so? Uh, okay, I was wondering where the trash picker boom was happening. And I'm not surprised to see Zimbabwe sees recycling boom as waste picking, otherwise known as garbage picking, becomes lucrative business in the shithole country of Zimbabwe. There you go. Okay. When it rains, it pours. Bangladesh wildlife trade booms during monsoon. Uh, okay. We have heard all of this news about protected areas saving the planet. Okay. Let's give a big hand to Mexico announcing 13 new protected areas. I have seen with my own eyes some of the protected areas in Mexico. Hmm. You know, this again is why we need Rhett Butler in our lives. We never would have been able to figure out that expected ship traffic to LNG Canada port could see whale deaths rise. Hmm. The nutrient-rich ancestral waters of the Git Gat First Nation in northern British Columbia are a critical habitat for fin, humpback, and killer whales. Hmm. But the development of a $35 billion LNG terminal threatens these whales as shipping traffic in the region is projected to surge, leading to more frequent encounters between whales and ships. There you go. Ah, would you believe that a deep sea mining project has resurfaced in the shithole country of Papua New Guinea despite community opposition? Yes, an embattled deep sea mining project appears to be moving ahead in Papua New Guinea. Huh despite more than a decade of opposition from local communities on the grounds that it could harm the fisheries on which they rely as well as the broader ecosystem. Huh. Uh. 
Okay. We all know what is going on with the carbon sinks in tropical forest, but we now hear that tropical lakes are carbon super sinks even more than forest. Yes. Research shows that Amazon water bodies capture 39% more carbon per unit area than the rainforest itself. Huh. You don't need to uh, go into the state of tropical lakes. Uh. All right, could you believe that there were some deceptions in the Amazon summit? Hmm, I guess I should have read this last week. The summit of the eight Amazon countries held in Brazil produced many statements of good intentions, but exactly zero concrete commitments. No agreement was reached on ending oil extraction in the Amazon or on ending deforestation. Urgent but politically difficult topics were not discussed, such as plans to build roads opening rainforest areas and the need to end the legalization of land claims on government land. There you go. Uh, why are giraffes hiding? Why are giraffes hiding? Study shows increasing temperature extremes on Brazil's coast. Uh, here we have offshore oil drilling faces backlash in Argentina. Here is hydropower in the Amazon. Uh, here is the shithole city of Jakarta snagging the most polluted place on the planet title as air quality plunges. Uh, here is maybe one reason the giraffes are hiding cordophon giraffes I guess that's a kind of giraffe face extinction in 15 years if poaching continues there you go but we are going to leave with these words from a Kenyan coral gardener. Yes. Uh, this is what Kenyan coral gardener has to say about coral reefs, at least in Kenya. All will be well. And there you go. All will be well in Kenyan coral reefs. What do you think, Sandra Banza? Will all be well in Kenyan coral reefs? Anyway, since I realize I am talking to myself and I'm getting hungry, the little dog says it is time 
to get some of that Walmart factory farms chicken sizzling on the fossil fueled gas grill. Get out there and enjoy your factory farmed fellow earthlings sizzling on a fossil fuel grill on a beautiful evening in the end times. Probably you still can. Bye guys.